Hey, Michelle Glass here, and we are back still working on these cranial bones. We are going to be talking today about the sphenoid bone. Um, and here we have a disarticulated sphenoid. So the term articulation means uh, joint or attached um, bones that are attached together. And disarticulated then would mean not attached. So this is just the sphenoid. Now I like to start by looking at um, the disarticulated sphenoid because this is a tricky bone for me, um, but when I see it here, I can sort it out pretty well. Um, so your book will describe the sphenoid as a bat-shaped bone. So can you see the wings? That's what I'm holding. Feet hanging down, body of the bat. So this is actually the front of the sphenoid. I'm gonna turn it around. So you're looking at the top. So here would be the wings, and this is the body of the bat. And notice it looks like there's a little seat there. That seat actually has a name, it's called the cella tersica. It's where a gland called the pituitary gland is gonna sit. We'll study that later in the semester. Um, I actually start by looking for my cella tersica on my model here. So this bone fits in just like that. So here is my cella tersica, you see my little seat? Okay, now I'm gonna use my suture lines to trace out the rest of my bone. So you should be able to do that here. Uh, notice that it comes up here as well. So when we're looking at this view, here's your temporal, here's your frontal, that's a little part of the parietal, and this right here is the sphenoid. Sphenoid or sphenoid. When you look straight at the model, sphenoid is making part of that eye orbit there. And remember, we have these feet that are hanging down at the bottom right there. We're going to see those feet here. So right there. Okay, so let's name some structures. So we've already started talking about the cella tersica. Then we have here what are called the lesser wings. So we're using that bad analogy. And then here we have what are called the greater wings. Okay. Looking in the eye orbit, we have what look like cracks in the bone. So you have a crack at the top and at the bottom. Cracks in bones are called fissures. So the top crack would be the um, superior orbital fissure and the bottom crack would be the inferior orbital fissure and of course you can see those in both eye orbits and then when you angle your model like this you can see a passageway and when you stick your pointer through there you can see the passageway sticking out here over top of that cella tersica so I'll spin it around like this you see Oops. We got our angle. And you can see it on both sides. That passageway is called the optic optic canal. The optic canal is where the optic nerve, that's the nerve from the eyeball, goes straight back into the brain. So optic canal. Okay. Okay, and then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm looking, um, if, if I were studying the model myself, I would look at it directly, but here I'm going to show it like this. I'm going to grab directly underneath uh, the model there and I'm grabbing those feet of the bat. The feet of the bat are called the pterygoid processes and the pterygoid is crazy spelling. It's spe spelled with a silent PT, kind of like a pterodactyl. So pterygoid processes here. And that should be it on the sphenoid. So again, I'm going to start with finding my cella tersica, which is my feature I use to recognize it. Trace out my suture lines of my sphenoid. Make sure I can see that's making up some of the eye orbit. And then here and here as well. Going back to the internal cranial cavity, find the lesser wings, greater wings. Inside the eye orbits, find the superior and then the inferior orbital fissures. Find that optic canal and then grab hold of those 
pterygoid spelled with a silent P processes. That's it.